We typically start out the meeting with an opportunity for public comment. Um, I think I know there is none, but so goes that announcement. No public comment tonight. Um, we have um, on the agenda. Um, site plan review amendment forest construction for Leah Jeep, which is a 7,064 square foot addition at 263 King Street, Northampton, map ID 24B 67. Yes, sir. I should let everybody know that I have done work for Porsche, and I don't believe that would affect my. <coughs> so noted. Would anyone like for Dan to abstain from the meeting? I used to own a Jeep a few years ago. So. And are you working with them now? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, can I have your name and I see yeah, Eric Forish, <coughs> Forish Construction, representing the Leah Auto Group. Uh -huh. Thank you, Madam Here's Chairman, Madam Planner, ladies and gentlemen of the Planning Board. Uh, as uh, you heard the uh, Chairman uh, describe, this is uh, for the property that was formerly the Leah Kia facility. Uh, we were before you uh, previously uh, within the last year, uh, and you uh, graciously approved uh, some modifications to the existing building and those approved modifications were to put an identity element on the front of the building uh, which is this feature here uh, and since that time we have debranded the building i.e. removing the elements identifying it as a Kia franchise uh, ultimately this will be converted to a Chrysler slash Jeep franchise this location. Uh, and as we have proceeded through that initial uh, permit process, uh, the <coughs> LIA group has recognized that the existing facility is not large enough to accommodate all of the activities of the uh, Chrysler facility that's uh, now located on Damon Road which will be moved over here. So the reason we're before you this evening is to request approval for an expansion of that facility. Uh, I'm showing elevations here, which <coughs> come around. There's uh, two parts to this expansion. Currently on this side of the building, on the right side of the building as you face it, is the service reception garage bay. And that's currently one door, so we would be extending it to a twin door facility. So there's two drive up bays on that face King Street. And at the rear of the facility, there would be an addition, and this is showing from the side, a rear addition to the service garage area. Uh, the reason being the size of Chrysler slash Dodge trucks are larger than can be accommodated in the existing uh, service bays that were accommodated for the compact Kia type vehicles. So the street elevation would primarily remain the same as was last reviewed here with the Chrysler element and as I say an extension of the uh, service reception which would all be uh, a look upon material that has currently been reinstalled on the facade of the former Kia building. It's now been transformed into the colors of the Chrysler product. It used to be white, now it's silver. So now we're moving on to the site plan. This footprint is the existing building. This is King Street. There are currently three islands behind the building. This is sheet number six. So this is the existing building. This is the expanded service reception. 
This is the entrance to the property. And this is the addition on the rear, which is proposed at 60 foot deep by the existing width, which is 100 feet, so 6,000 square foot addition. <coughs> uh, to the rear of that addition would be continual uh, landscape island. And I know that uh, Carolyn questioned a couple of existing trees, mm -hmm. and we are showing trees located <coughs> to the corners here, and we certainly are flexible as far as those locations, but we are proposing them here. Uh, the, there is parking spots along the side of the property which would be eliminated to allow for uh, vehicular traffic to move about in a safe manner. A couple other comments. Uh, when I was here previously, uh, we had a discussion about uh, the, the pruning that was not approved uh, to the trees on the property and I presented a report from the arborist as far as the health and condition of those trees and the summary of his report is that during the dormant time of the year which is current that the trees should be properly pruned by <laughs> someone that's uh, in the business and I have provided Carolyn a copy of a purchase order to that uh, firm to move forward with the appropriate pruning that, that was outlined. Uh, in terms of uh, stormwater and review, there's been a lot of uh, back and forth dialogue, emails with uh, uh, engineering regarding the maintenance and so on. And uh, the LEA group has been maintaining the three properties in terms of periodic uh, cleaning of catch basins and things of that nature, but not at the frequency that it was supposed to occur. Uh, once we were made aware of that, we have, during this past month, on this property, <coughs> all the catch basins have been cleaned. We even went to the extent of having uh, Fletcher scope the drain lines, and I could provide you with a, with a thumb drive, and you could look at the inside of the pipes if you care to this evening, but I'm sure that you've got other things you're interested in. Uh, and we did provide a report as to the uh, functioning, proper functioning of the on-site system. Uh, again, there was some dialogue from engineering questioning uh, the author of the report. Uh, the person that signed it, although not a PE, his boss, Michael Schaefer, who is a PE, who did the design for this, he was the one that actually went on site and did the inspection. So his subordinate drafted the report and s submitted it, but uh, we certainly will get that upgraded with uh, Mr. Schaefer's <coughs> signature and stamp. Uh, there's some other things with engineering as far as a uh, uh, recorded stormwater management plan on the deed. Uh, we've attempted over three years with uh, engineering to get this resolved and there's silence for a while and now that silence, again, there's dialogue back and forth. So I think we're, we're reaching the end of that hurdle uh, because we have submitted uh, the, the, the instrument for recording with the signatures of the LEA Auto Group and uh, engineering has some more language they want refined and we'll be glad to do that. Uh, and I'm just referring to the report from engineering. Uh, Again, quite, quite a bit of what was discussed was just the ongoing maintenance, and that certainly is something we agree to and would make sure will happen. And the representative of uh, one of the owners of the LEA group is aware of this and so on. So at this point, I think I'll just turn it over to you folks and open up the questions. Push. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, if, if you want to have comments to us about the process, maybe we should have done that before the presentation. Then, then we'll open it up for questions. Yeah, I mean, just the, the only issue, I, I did send the DPW comments, mm -hmm. um, and there's some follow-up. They recommended a couple of conditions, which I think would address. Um, obviously, they wanted to see the inspections by the PE and a re report by the PE before the hearing closed, but um, they've got that initial um, paperwork in, so I think they're comfortable with having 
you go ahead and close your part of the permit, but um, <coughs> make sure that no building permit is issued um, so that those final items can, um, we can make sure they've they don't linger anymore <laughs> um, and get addressed. So, um, you know, and it's all really related to stormwater um, and the functioning of the system. So in one of their comments, they remarked about putting the drain under the building. Yeah. Um, do you have any reaction to that? Well, yeah, um, this, that work is actually covered under the plumbing code because it's under a building and therefore the material is cast iron, which uh, those familiar with, with plumbing, uh, it's extremely rare that cast iron piping would fail because it has to be properly installed, it has to be pressure tested, and so on. Uh, we will consider looking at rerouting the pipe, but I can't stand here and say that that's a good idea from an engineering standpoint, I have to defer to the engineers. <coughs> you know, gladly consider that if rerouting around the building is possible, okay. we'll be glad to do that. Any other questions for the applicant? Um, Devin, that was a recommendation by DPW, right? Not a requirement. Okay. So it's up to the applicant. <coughs> if they yeah, yeah. I, I think it was more, uh, it seemed like they were calling your attention to it to say right. it looked it, unusual to us. We've done it several times in the past for other projects. Uh, in Typically, that occurs when the grade is such that to get to point A, from point A to point B, we can't go to another point C because the added length prevents the proper pitch. And I can't tell you yes or no for this case, but that's typically the time that we would put in the cast iron instead of rerouting around is that we just don't have the pitch to do that. So we'll be gladly to investigate it because if it's possible and makes sense. Yep. Is that a public health issue anyway? I mean, if the pipe breaks under their building, they just have a difficult time repairing it. Um, well, there. I mean, there's the cleanup of what gets loose, but well, storm you know, water. They're building. Right. Yeah. yeah. So right, it's not. I mean, DPW is just as you can see in the memo, just noted that it's not the best practice to put a building on top of a stormwater pipe. I mean, there are buildings on pipe, um, top of pipes all over, but now our codes are different. So in the event that you're, you have a scenario like that, you want to make sure the pipe is a whole lot stronger than what you might typically put in so that it's less likely to have a failure um, so that you don't have to go rip in the floor of a building to maintain it. DPW doesn't have jurisdiction over it because it's a private line crossing private property. So it's really... Right. And there are no easements anywhere on on this private line, so it's really a matter of, you know, judgment basically. Um, it's not in the public way, so DPW can't um, mandate the change. And, and as I, and as I've said, that uh, from a practical standpoint, it makes sense. So we'll gladly look at that and see if it physically is possible to do it, because it would actually be less expensive uh, using the. Um, stormwater pipe materials than plumbing cast iron uh -huh. pipe materials. Anything else? Yep. There, uh, there was one question by staff about uh, the drains and the downspouts, the discrepancy between drawings. Um, that, that, those so drawings were updated and resubmitted to engineering. Um, I'm looking at a small version of the lighting plan and um, I think to the north of you on King Street, which is further out of town, if I've got my north right. Uh, what is? Um, I've, got, I've got a large version with me. With, that's just what I mean. We typically would guard the lot line light overflow, but I'm wanting you to give me your <coughs> thoughts on that. <coughs> So I'm looking at that. This, this, this is their other property. This okay. is Honda. I, I, I wanted you to say that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so in that sense, we have a concern that probably goes away because it's all, it's basically a continuous ownership. Yes, one ownership. Um, the, there's a little bit of light at the front, um, but that's on to King Street, so I didn't have any problem with that. Uh, I actually think that may be a, uh, and I can't bear it. Uh, could very well be. There's a. It does not extend past the curb. Yep. And after we had original, because this is original, 
work that we're not changing. After we have done that, we actually had an engineer go out with a light meter to verify that we were within the specifications that we said we would be within. Yeah. And I haven't been by there at night. Those are shielded. Those aren't going up, right? And there's trees. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? You've got a lot of paperwork in front of me. <laughs> to close public comment. Second by Ann. Sorry, John. Um, so we've uh, had the presentation. We've done the questions by the board. We had uh, public hearing. We've closed public comment. We have an opportunity for more board discussion if anyone has any other thoughts about the property. The only thing that comes to mind is in the past, we've um, set conditions that requirements had to be made before a building permit was issued, and it was up to the discretion of the building department uh, whether they could issue that or not, and they changed it to, well, the condition had to be met before occupancy was granted. And it came a bit of a quagmire with the neighborhood. So I'm just wondering about, in this situation, what kind of reassurance is there that if we have a condition that, I know it's just kind of paperwork, but so was the other, <laughs> that you know this condition has to be met before a building um, permit is made. What kind of, what could you, could you speak to that? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that um, that did happen in the scenario that the, obviously there was an appeal <coughs> to you all. Um, it's not typical, I would say, that that happens. Um, I think, um, and the building commissioner doesn't reinterpret conditions. Um, I think in that one situation, it was about um, um, finance. Um, uh, I'm sorry, it was about. Um, a lot of line. Mm -hmm. a lot yeah, line no, question. Right. Um, getting the driveway issue hammered out, right. I think. Um, and so I wouldn't say that it was his interpretation. I think there was a rationale given that they needed, the applicant needed more time to work congenially or hopefully congenially with the applicant. So I think, I feel like that was a, I guess what I'm trying to say is I think that was a unique circumstance. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say that it's the practice of the building commissioner to reinterpret conditions. Um, so I would um, be confident that um, pre-building permit conditions would be held. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So revisit for me the DPW concerns. So it, um, I think we've had very few questions of the applicant, so I'm anticipating that we would approve site plan. Uh, we certainly vote on that. But my question says, when we do that, how are the assurances that the DPW wants in terms of filing the amendments and getting the, the uh, maintenance plan approved and getting the plan signed by an engineer? Those things can still be tied to the, perm to the building permit. Right. So I think, and and I and um, there's been discourse, as the applicant noted, with DPW, and they're moving in that direction. There's some final things that have to be done. So there's this the maintenance and operations plan that has to be recorded, mm -hmm. um, and um, then there's just the finalization of understanding that the stormwater system will function as designed because it's been maintained at X intervals or not if it's still functioning as designed. So those are the two key pieces in um, that should be um, definitely done before building permits issued. I think that um, DPW is comfortable w with that, knowing that they're moving in that direction. And so um, I think the dialogue will continue. Okay. And this is an amendment, obviously, of a, you know, there was a dealership. This is just an add-on. So it's not, you're not approving a brand new site plan that's a completely different use. Um, so, you know, the use is staying the same. It's really just buildings being added. So what I'm getting at is those three conditions that I mentioned need to be on the site plan approval so that they become part of going forward. 
Right. So um, actually, I noted two. So, so can the, you um, well, there, there's the ops maintenance plan. There's the PE engineering, but then there's the filing of the amendment. Is that not something? Well, that's part of the operation and maintenance right. plan. Okay. So it would be one because they need it's an amendment of the original stormwater plan anyway, and that's the thing that has to get recorded. Okay. Having led the horse to water, would anyone like to make that proposal? <laughs> Motion to approve amendment to site plan at 263 King Street with condition that the operations and maintenance agreement be filed at the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds uh, and provision of annual documentation and inspection of stormwater system provided to City of Northampton. Signed DW, by? Signed by a professional engineer. Thank you. Prior to, Prior to issuance of a building permit. Second? Second. All right. Second it. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you again. Appreciate Thanks. It very much. <coughs> Everybody hurry home for the debates. Carolyn, do you have anything else for us tonight? I have a few things, but I did. I am subtracting one item. <laughs> oh. Which one? I hope it's the site plan review. <laughs> it's one of the ANRs. <laughs> um, so we can do this in any order. I, I don't know if you want to talk more about the site plan draft. You, you got it right before the meeting last time and didn't have time to digest it. We made some changes based on the discussion. So, you know, we're, we can talk about it now or, if, um, you know, or let me know if you haven't had a chance to look at it and you want to put it off for two weeks. We actually don't have any permits for February 11th, so we can do another you know, um, code and planning session. Mm -hmm. okay. If, yeah. if that would be great. Yeah. I, I think it'd be better if we did, but let me just try this idea. If we discussed it tonight, would we meet then? <laughs> <laughs> just, just checking. Um, well, we could, <coughs> we, we might, because we were, we were thinking about ways to address the URA map thing and maybe create a strategy for going forward with that zoning because we didn't quite finish yeah. that. So we might have a short meeting anyway. <laughs> <coughs> um, I, I need, uh, my comments are not on paper. It's okay. my reaction. I looked yeah. through it and I, I think I didn't uh, think we'd really get to it tonight. Okay. Okay. All right, so then that'll be homework for the 11th. Okay. Okay. Um, You're going to send that out again? Would you like me to? Okay. So, but this isn't going to change what you just sent out. No. So, so we can look at this. This way. Right. Yes. Right. So Is there a date on the bottom, by the way? Did I put a date? I don't think so. No. no. Okay. Well, I can date it just so it's an updated date and resend it if you want. But you're not going to ask my poor little printer to print it out again. Yeah, yeah, okay. just like the yeah. print day. Yeah. So this is so that and just jumping forward. January to the, the is, is there going to be a new map for the meeting on the 11th? Or? Yeah, we wouldn't. We, right, we we're, we're going to change that based on your okay. um, comments too about the FFR and that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So keep that. And so then the other two items are minutes and two in ANR. So whichever one you would do first. <laughs> Uh, any comments to the minutes? Move approval. Thank you, John. Second. Uh, second from Tess. All in favor? Minutes. Uh, and the A&R is two? Um, yeah, so one is Pulaski Park. Pulaski Park. Um, so, um, there's a piece down here that was part of the original Round Hill, sorry, Round House um, redevelopment project. So the city owns parcel down here and then Pulaski Park. This ANR is the, for the purposes of. Perhaps um, I don't have it the right way. North us. Um, taking a portion of Here's basically South. it's the hillside here mm -hmm. which is not officially part of Pulaski Park but it's part of city-owned property 
and merging it with the Pulaski Park piece so that then we can use the funding to mm -hmm. um, do the part two, uh, phase mm -hmm. two of the park. So there's no, they're actually, they're, they're just sort of carving a, a, I don't even think this is a new lot boundary. It was just two, there were a couple parcels the city owns here, so it's just shifting it officially from general city purposes to park purposes. What was phase two of Blasky Park? Was that the, like the walkway? Yeah, to get down? going down. So it's gonna be on this parcel primarily. Um, so, so it's increasing the size of Pulaski Park right. by how much? Um, by 14,192 <laughs> square feet, plus or minus. <laughs> so you're just acquiring it so that, is it a CDBG grant? Or We're not acquiring it. Land? The city owns it. It's just oh, a transfer oh, okay. from one. But you're transferring it for the purposes of the right. plan. Right. And position. then it will go under Chapter 91, so it will be permanently protected uh -huh. as a park, and it can't be used for any other purpose. But it also allows you to use current funds to do stuff with it. Right. So the funding that we got, the second park grant, mm -hmm. is for, for this, but it has to be on park land before sure. yeah. okay. it can be used. I think there's also Um, is there any plan to use that portion of the lot for staging and discarding of topsoil and doing, is, is there anything in the construction of the rest of the park that needs to use that back parcel now? I have no idea. I know. I, I don't either. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, but they're all, they're, I mean, the work is going on now. Yeah, but that back portion isn't really a for anything yet I mean well it didn't fund it for anything yet I mean right. if um, no it is it, we got the money for it for phase two we got another round of state funds okay. for that but right now I think there's a fence and they, they could have removed it because I haven't seen the park once they you know wrapped it uh -huh. so it may be that right on the top there they have staging stuff it wouldn't surprise me um, and certainly they'll need places to put some stuff, you know, when they start working here, right. so. Well, my feeling is these are all curiosity questions, but of yeah. course we want the whole park unified under right. one set. Yeah. 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 And it's not a creation of a buildable lot, it's just sort of, it's just mm -hmm. transferring land. Yeah. So, so you know, are they? Do you, actually, do you actually gonna deed it from the city to the city? Um, uh, park there, designation, right? You would rezone it's, it? Yeah, you, we have to designate it under Chapter 91 as a portion of the park. So it's going to be recorded um, as part of Pulaski Park. So it's going to be sort of um, that protects, reallocated. That protects it in terms of the money being right. for park purposes. Right. And then that piece could never, you know, in 15 right. years, we couldn't change our minds and say, oh, let's do a big hotel project. <laughs> it could, but it would require a uh, uh, right. right. legislative action. Yeah, legislative yeah. action. Yeah. So we have a motion on the floor by Tess. Do I hear a second? John, <coughs> time. All in favor? Uh, Are they way ahead of schedule and John. on the park because of the weather? They're still, so, yeah, they should yeah. be. <laughs> You haven't looked at the webcam recently? I've looked in, I've yeah. peered into the little slip. You can, there's like, <laughs> there's little ways. Like Texas almost every morning we go on the front the page. The, 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 the first tech. home page of the city, there's a web uh, oh. cam. The, the webcam's cool. Yeah. The webcam is cool. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, Greg's me too. Uh, yeah. Slow down. As, yeah. as long as you're not the doing it in your car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doing it while driving. Right. Any other um, thoughts? You know, I would like to do one quick thing that came to me last round is if you could go around for your other collateral committees. Uh, if you have a thought about what, just let us know what, if, are they meeting? What are you doing? What's up with those committees? Um, I have a question about mine. All right. I don't think I'm on one. <laughs> I mean, I was I was supposed to be the be PBTC, quiet. the PBTC person, but then I never heard anything, and I, I never followed up with anybody. Um, who's so I need to send your name to them so you get the notice. Okay. Um, and no worries. <laughs> maybe as an aside, though, can I try something first? Who's doing transportation and parking? Because Anne took over the bicycle, but who's doing TPC? 
Um, but it's a look. It's me. You're going to the to the afternoon. Yeah, I thought it was too. But I, we thank you. <coughs> I just wanted to make sure I, I knew you were doing bicycle pad, but I just didn't know you'd picked up that one too. Yep. So Tess, you mentioned so nobody's contacted you regarding that. And no. Bill mentioned last time we met that he's on Edlu and he's never been to a meeting because Edlu's changed they its orientation. It's it's we're not allowed to be on it. Yeah, it's <laughs> really? lucky Bill. That's why right, Bill, yeah, popped <laughs> off. So wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what is why are we not allowed to be on it? It's a city council committee. Oh. It's not a. Change mix up. <laughs> All right. Well, which brings me to. I have another or two, just so you know. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I didn't okay. see that we did. I um, just want you to know. With the restructuring of the DPW committee. Public works. Is it, are we? Is that one we should have picked up, or is that a city council committee like Edlu? Um. Public works, no, that's, that's, um, that's like the planning board, it's not city council. So there's a separate appointed, mayoral appointed okay. body. Good. I'll take that answer. Um, Dan, are you on one? I'm doing a technical review. We thank and you. I'm backing up Dan. <laughs> that, which so far has been a very low maintenance operation. Yeah. You're doing the one that's at like five in the morning, right? Life in the morning, <laughs> like <laughs> seven to eight. eight. <laughs> Might as well be five. <laughs> Have there been any technical reviews lately? Just had one. Yeah. Oh. Um, and there's another one. I have to send out the notice. There'll be one in February. Well, for me and some of the rest of us, what is that? Um, it's the re. It's a reconfiguration of Cumberland Farms. Uh, in no, no, what's, no. What's technical <laughs> review? It's a, it's an, in, it's an informal review. Yeah. I, yeah. I just they think would. we should say. Oh, yeah. okay. um, it's um, a um, review of project plans by prospective, um, well, app prospective applicants really, because sometimes these projects never come to right. fruition. So it's providing so it's, guidance to applicants prior to this step. That's right, right. and and Why telling I'm them. Sorry. Right, building, housing, economic development, depending if that's relevant, Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. um, just to say, don't forget to look at this. You have to add X, Y, or Z, or whatever. Mm -hmm. so. Applicants really like it because it really helps them be prepared right. when they come right. in front of us. Right. And, and it sort of is a uh, roadmap for what they have to go do. Yeah. 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 Carla, what are you on? I have a five years. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, we'll go look. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a reason I wanted to do this. You're on the state hospital citizen. Yes, yes, I am. Not a lot going. Oh, you have your list. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, that is so All interesting about. because that that their their overall guidance plan comes out when it needs to and goes away when it doesn't. That's my experience. And we have not needed to. Right. <laughs> there you have it. She's not even with the huge goal. expansion into the back recently. We need more subcommittees. We've got two are not one that never meets. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it sounds well, good. I, I mean, I'm beginning to question my sanity. I mean, CPC takes as much time as this does. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a real... Uh, and thank you. <laughs> we appreciate your leadership. Yeah. So it averages out. Yeah, maybe. Um, Mark? I'm on the Capital Improvement Committee, and we go from September through November. Um, mm. And we meet every week, and basically all the board, all the departments of the city come in front of us and mm. give us a long list of, uh, not a wish list, but mm. things that they mm. would like to pursue. Mm. And then we prioritize everything, rank mm. everything, and submit it to the mayor. And he shortlists everything and puts it in the budget. So that's what we're up to. I would like to say that CPC, I think, gets more than their fair share of things that should be on that list. Alan? I'm on the housing partnership. Oh, good. And um, I actually have, it's not clear to me yet, even though I actually have gone to almost all the meetings, um, what its function is. 
Um, I think it may be a, um, an organization in search of a function. Stay with it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Is it is it a time? I mean, is is it a time commitment on your part? Uh, two hours once a month. Okay. So it's not a lot. But I think Peg Keller really has to scratch her head very seriously every month to figure out what to do at the meeting. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Just That's too bad. Just on the verge of saying at a meeting. <laughs> yeah, or maybe they meet less often. Um, housing came before the Community Preservation Committee because we're just starting a new round and had kind of analyzed where the dollars and cents over the years had gone and proportionately housing does not get a, a fourth, you know, you know, there's, there are categories that you can spend. Um, but it's really almost a structural problem. It's so hard to get housing projects presented and come <coughs> up for us. So I think we've had a nice discussion about it, but it, I didn't feel like um, the city CPC funds were being sh slighted to housing. It's just that it, we, we pretty much jump on every project that comes before us if it's a housing Just project. respond to applications, I guess. Yeah, and that's right. the other thing. It's yeah. just you, you can only do what comes before you as a, as a grantee. Another a and R. Yes, um, Sorry, th this, one's in, this one's in Florence, um, Chestnut Street. It's not creating a new lot. It's really just to sell a swath of property from one um, house lot to the abutter to give them more setback. Um, so um, the, uh, well, what's interesting is there's an existing 50-foot lot, which is what's 50-foot frontage, which is what we've m changed the zoning to allow. They're going to add 10 feet <laughs> to make it a 60 foot lot, but I think it's because of the setback. They don't meet, um, it just gives the house a little bit more setback. So there's no, um, you know, both lots will still comply in the end. Um, and is this on the east side of Chestnut? Yes. Yep. How, how big is the, the, the lot that's giving up the property? How, how big will it be, the frontage? Uh, well, when it, uh, it is 90 feet, it oh, okay. will remain with 25,000 square feet of lot area still remaining okay. so it's a substantially sized lot test moves to approve mark seconds it all in favor okay um. wow Devin nice job. <laughs> move adjourn second test seconded all in favor thank you all <laughs>